Hi, so my name is Khadija and I specialize in henna natural hair color and Ayurvedic hair care. The focus of how I approach henna and what I've brought as the founder and CEO of Henna Sook is that I want to take henna to a different kind of level. We want henna to be used as a raw natural ingredient uh, and in a singular ingredient that where you don't find a lot of chemicals and blends and all these other type of henna colors and blends and whatnot. You want to use henna in its true natural form. I get really excited when uh, cosmetologists and hairstylists and colorists give henna a try. And this just opens the door for conversation and learning more and new things. So let's get into it. Hi, beautiful. Today we're talking about the wonderfully debated world of henna hair color. A lot of people really despise it and hate it. Most of those people who hate it are hairdressers. I know there's not a lot of options out there for a natural hair color. And I know henna is the most popular one. So that is so true, yes. Hairstylists and colorists and cosmetologists tend to not be into henna. They have just heard so many bad things about it. And yes, henna is difficult to remove because it's supposed to stay in your hair and protect your hair. It's not supposed to typically be removed by chemicals because you're seeking out a more natural hair dyeing alternative. So it's true. I've actually never used henna before. So if you're wanting to try henna for the first time and you have no idea about it either, well, we're gonna learn together. I wanna actually try henna on Miss Manny Quinn today and learn all about the pros and cons of using henna. And maybe by the end of the video, I'll be able to help you make that decision on if you should use it or not. And I like that. So he's being really transparent and he's gonna tell us like about the pros and cons that he has found out and help you make a decision that works best for you. We're gonna unwrap that as we go. And we're gonna get into it. And we're gonna have some fun with some hair color that I've never used before. Today we're using this stuff, Surya Brazil. This says natural hair coloring and hair treatment, a 100% natural and vegetable formula, not tested on animals. Does not contain ammonia, PPD, parabens, peroxide, heavy metals, artificial fragrance, mineral oils, or GMOs. I don't see anything on here that says the ingredients. Uh... <laughs> so the first thing is like you don't see anything that's on the ingredients which is kind of like mm, I don't know typically henna in its natural powder form when you mix it with warm to hot like distilled water um, that's the best way to use it but it doesn't stay fresh forever so a lot of these liquid hennas and mixes always have hidden ingredients and I'm not sure if everyone knows but if an ingredient is less than one percent legally According to the FDA, you do not have to list it. I get it, it's a leaf, but I wanna know more because I feel like that's not it. Can you look up ingredients for this hair, hair dye, Emma? Arnica, acai, raw, aloe vera, Brazil nut, and guarana from India the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. Henna powders also contain amla, an Indian fruit rich in vitamin C, shikai, shikiki, fruit for the hair. <laughs> he really needs to watch my tongue twister video. That would be so funny because she's doing a great job saying all the names of the herbs. But yes, your henna doesn't have to be so complicated. Every today and is a superior cleanser that supports hair growth. Okay, thank oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Seems sketchy to me, but uh, it's natural ingredients. That could be literally anything. This is $9.99. Pretty damn cheap. And it comes in a little packet like this. It smells really good. I love the smell of crushed up leaves. <laughs> but does he? Do you really love the smell of crushed up leaves? There's an easy fix for that. Essential oils. All you gotta do is mix the powder with some water and you get a poop-like looking paste that you're supposed to put on your head. Yes, you know how many times I have heard, especially on TikTok, that henna looks like poop? Mm -hmm. Yes, I hear it a lot. Or diarrhea just great comments on the way henna looks. It's actually so hilarious. Emma pooped in it. I don't know how I'm gonna get this evenly on the head. It also says not to comb it or brush it or do anything like that. And hopefully this is enough for the entire head. Let's so he asks, says kind of like, he hopes that there's enough for her hair. I haven't seen the person's hair that he's going to be doing it yet. Uh, onto so uh, it looks a little thick henna is not really supposed to be that thick um, It's usually supposed to be a little bit more like pancake batter like thick full fat Greek yogurt That would help a little bit because it is, seems pretty thick. Maybe he'll fix it in a bit 
Let's try this out, shall we? Ooh, I'm thinking it's gonna leave more of a splash of red. So this is her starting level. It's about a level six. This is her natural hair color. It has not been colored before. That's a pretty hair color. That's gonna come out really nice with the henna, um, depending on, there's a lot of ingredients in the henna that he happens to be using, so I'm not 100% sure. He didn't really mention what kind of henna color it's going to be producing. Henna naturally would have given a nice, gorgeous, rich red tone on the hair. But you can manipulate it with indigo if you wanted to make it more reddish brown, brown, dark brown, up to black even. So on my trusty dusty direction, it says to shampoo the hair and towel dry it. So we're gonna be applying onto damp hair. And yes, shampooing beforehand really will help open up the hair and also applying it onto damp hair will help it go on much easier. The reason why I'm doing red today is because henna does not actually naturally come in black. They add things like indigo to the color to make it black. All hair can react differently depending on what chemicals are already on the head and each color is natural. So you don't actually know how that particular leaf that's in your package is gonna react to your hair. When you're doing this color, you have to be open to it not being what it looks like on the box, which is scary. So yeah, it, that's another thing with henna blends. It's very unpredictable to say exactly how the hair color will come out. Keeping it basic with henna, indigo, like you pretty much are set with the way it usually kind of will come out for the most part. It's a much better guarantee than a mix of blends. Um, and then you don't know what you might be allergic to. So keeping it more simple with the ingredients also does help you narrow it down and kind of like figure those things out before making a jump into henna hair color with some you know random blend and yes i love that he mentions indigo the indigo is definitely really great when it comes to henna hair color if you want to make your hair reddish brown brown dark brown and even up to black tones i'm gonna wash her hair and towel dry it and then i will be back to apply the henna so what i'm gonna actually do is try out the red henna on this side and then try out the burgundy on the right side we're gonna see what the real difference is and if there is any difference and if these colors come out how they're supposed to come out which i'm sure they won't i want to see just how so wait did he just say so that they won't so okay so we'll wait we'll see i think you might be a little surprised i think the henna will do some of what the aim is Let, let's see let's see <laughs> so i'm gonna start applying this on the bottom of the head oh yeah it's exactly typically i i mean I don't know if the standards have changed, honestly. I, I am not a cosmetologist. I don't have any plans to actually go to cosmetology school because I don't want to learn about chemicals and they're not into teaching you about henna hair color. Hence, our professional henna curriculum coming out very shortly. And I uh, would usually start at the top of the hair and section it first, maybe a little bit, maybe just do two sections. Um, and it would have been nice to yeah, start at the front and move towards the back. That's, that's typically how I do it. But let's see. It's exactly how I thought it was gonna feel. Like you're smearing poop on your head. I don't know how I'm gonna get this even and her head is gonna be completely stained. Okay, so. It's honestly, it's it's really thick. It's, it's too thick. <laughs> Guys, make sure that you don't mix your head up like this thick. It's definitely very thick. Now I'm gonna be applying it to the entire hair strand all the way down because this does not actually lift your hair. It just deposits tone. It actually just lays on top of the hair fiber. You're not gonna have to worry about hot roots, aka your roots getting lighter than your ends. You are gonna have to worry about people thinking you have poop on your head. Okay, not the worst. It's definitely a little green. I don't know how this is gonna turn their hair red. If this is- I'll be honest, when I do, every time I do see that it's green, even the indigo, the hen and the indigo being so green, I'm always like, wow, this is crazy. So, yeah, this is really cool. We're gonna be really depressed. The interesting thing is that it actually like fully coats your hair. Whereas like semi-permanent dye molecules just attached to your hair, this like fully puts a coating around it. In a way, kind of like suffocates your hair fiber. So it's gonna fill in. It doesn't sound really good when you say it like that. When you say you're gonna suffocate your hair strand, I would more say like probably like it definitely protects it. It definitely is a nourishing because henna is not only hair dye, it's also going to be very strengthening for the hair. Hair fiber. So it's gonna fill in all the cracks and holes in your hair and make it a lot less porous. But I've also said that it dries your hair out a lot. This is very confusing in a lot of ways. Yeah, and, and dryness is definitely a big thing you hear about when it comes to henna. It's an easy fix. And everyone that follows the Henna Soap channel knows that I talk about aloe vera as being such a major 
herb that is a game changer that will moisturize your hair when you're doing a henna hair color treatment in any Ayurvedic hair treatment that you're doing. Overall, the consensus is that the individual hair strands feel thicker, which is pretty cool. So if you have really fine hair and you wanna just keep it the same color forever, maybe this is an option for you. Well, it doesn't last forever. <laughs> henna, I mean, it does stay pretty long, but it does grow out and it does have some fade off. So yeah, not forever. <laughs> but for finer hair strands, you also don't want to uh, keep it on too, too long. That's another thing about fine hair strands. There's a few little adjustments. People say there's been no actual studies done on henna and what it's doing to your hair on a scientific level. Regular hair color has been researched a lot and that is why it's very widely used and trusted by many men and women. Henna is not that. Henna is a natural product. It doesn't need to go through the same testing and therefore it hasn't been tested. So we don't actually know what this is doing to your hair in the long term and after several uses, which is also a little scary. I'm, I'm Okay, we're talking about research, but that they also talk about, let's say, hair growth, for example. They do research and these studies on it because they get funding for it, for even hair growth. But like things like that are more chemical than more natural are going to be what gets promoted. It's a matter of who has the money to do this kind of research, which would be great when it came to henna, um, you know, more scientific research. But honestly, it's been around for thousands of years. This plant isn't going anywhere. But I don't think it's really scary because we do know that for thousands of years, people have used it. Maybe not here in like the United States or Canada really so much because it's a, you know, they're mostly immigrants. First of all, not even only that, but henna doesn't grow here. So, you know, you have more experience with people using it like, you know, in India, Pakistan, Morocco, people have been using that forever. Uh, the long-term effects, look at those people's hair, like their hair. Now there is something really nice about using a natural product like this on your hair and just how it makes you feel like you're doing something good for yourself because you are. I mean, at the end of the day, it is just leaves and you know, the leaves aren't gonna kill you. The leaves aren't gonna seep into your skin and do something crazy to you. Well, I mean, even though you're putting on your hair, you are getting some of those benefits uh, and it does touch your scalp to your hair so you are getting some of those benefits from those herbs and it does go into your bloodstream and it does go into you know your body as well so there hasn't been um henna's a very low allergen though yeah, where all the other formulas of hair color have a lot of chemicals in them. And you do have to worry about those things like, is this actually good for me? Is this going to kill me? Is this okay to use my whole life? Yeah, and the thing with henna, it is natural. The real henna, mind you, let me point out, real natural henna, the henna plant, the powder, just pure henna powder. Yes, I don't know about all the other ingredients that are found in a lot of these products, but it is natural and it is hands down a much better alternative to chemicals <laughs> These are the questions you may ask when you're using other kinds of normal hair color that has ammonia and peroxide. Now that I'm in here and applying, I'm kind of getting my thing down. I'm just taking really small sections. It is a mud-like consistency. You definitely have to work it in quite a lot. And I've heard it really stains your skin bad. So try and not get it on your face if you're gonna try this out yourself. Well, different parts of the body actually, when the dye does get on it, it doesn't really stain as much. Like your hands will probably get stained pretty strongly, but it doesn't really last that long. And on your face, you know, the skin's so, so thin. That's why people usually don't put henna on their face because it doesn't really last that long. A, a little bit like the freckles video, but it doesn't really last that long. But yes, you should use gloves and still like line your hairline with like a henna care balm. So far, I'm just really not convinced that this is going to change her hair color. I think she's gonna need some heat on her head. It just seems like a little too cold and a little too natural to change this. So the way that it is right now, it looks like it should look. The red side, now we're onto the burgundy. We're gonna talk more about the pros and cons of using henna, because there are some pros and there are definitely some cons. So I think after all that talking I just did, the biggest pros for me are that it's natural. It's going to coat your hair in a way that it will make it feel thicker and healthier, make you feel like you have all around just more hair, which I think is really cool. Also from what I've researched, this color does not fade nearly as fast as, you know, just 
regular red color from a normal color brand. So that's awesome. So that's why a lot of redheads choose to use henna because of the fact that it doesn't run out of your hair and it really, really grips on there. You also get some of the most beautiful red color I've ever seen in your hair when using henna. Obviously the issue with that, you can't really replicate it the same way every single time, but we'll get into that with our cons list. Yeah, he's probably gonna get into the cons of how henna layers and can darken up. Again, it depends on the type of henna you're using. So I guess we'll get in that a little later on. So what I note from the gloves, Brad, you're looking a little reddish on the gloves. I see those pink gloves turning red. So as I'm getting around the head with this henna color, it's actually getting easier. I'm using smaller sections and I'm using it as if it's mud, you know? It definitely sticks on top of the hair and to move it around, you kind of have to like really smush it in. What I wanted to say about also Brad, I love that you're actually using your hands to you know, bring the henna through the hair. That really helps it penetrate better for those who have gray hair and they wanna cover their grays. Just getting it to their hair to penetrate better, I just love when using your hands when it comes to henna. To move it around, you kind of have to like really smush it in. And you know, people said it's really, really messy. It's definitely messy, a little messier than, you know, normal hair color, but I wouldn't say it's too bad or too annoying. Some people may also say that the smell is a little crazy. Emma hates the smell, I love the smell. I'm so happy that he loves the, the scent. Oh, that's what makes me so excited. Yay, Brad, love that smell, that henna. Me too, I love the henna smell. <laughs> If you're into like very natural smells and like tea, this is going to be your thing. Otherwise, if you like more fragrancy, perfumey scents like Emma does, like Bath and Body Works. What? <laughs> but like I mentioned earlier, you can use essential oils, pure essential oils in your henna mix and it'll smell so amazing. Some of the cons include that you're never gonna get the color you actually want. With regular hair dye, you can- That's not necessarily true. You can get the desired color that you want. Yes, it can be a little tricky. I think that is almost sometimes with the, with dyes in general. Um, and if you have grays and then the porosity level of your hair, a few factors can go into that. Yes, there might be some trial and error at first, but you can nail it. You can get really close, if not exactly the color you want to get. With regular hair dye, you can literally pick and choose the exact color you're looking for. As a professional hairdresser, you can pick the exact um, path to get there. You can use 20 volume, you can use 30 volume, you can use whatever volume developer you need to use to get to your desired level and your desired redness. Um, you can also add pigments like copper, or red, or orange, or yellow into your formula. You can also add cassia and indigo and amla and other raw natural herbs to your henna hair dye to manipulate it as well to make the exact formula you're looking for another pro would be that you can lift permanent color out of your hair regular color henna is known to be difficult to lift he is so true he is on point i'm definitely not going to disagree with that it is hard to lift definitely but lifting chemicals over and over again as much fun as it can be to change your hair color it just wrecks havoc on the hair. It really does. Plus, we aren't really sure what it is um, when it's on your hair because there's been no studies done about henna and the effect on your hair. Hair stylists aren't sure if they can effectively lift your hair without it snapping off. But let me add this in. You can effectively lift the henna soap brand of henna products if you want to use chemicals because we still have clients that use perm that still will go back to hair dyes and they can safely do so because our henna is pure henna powder and pure herbs that you're using it won't conflict with chemical hair dyes there's no metallic salts no compound henna there's no garbage and trash and there's not like a million ingredients so you have to figure out if it's going to work or not so if you are professional hair colorist, stylist, cosmetologist, you can use our brand. You just have to give your clients all the information they need to make their own sound decision. And I think that's exactly what you do, Brad. I can see that like in the way that you approach this, it's like amazing. I love this about how you approached henna. Like honestly, I wish more cosmetologists and hairstyles and colors would um, approach it this way and be more open-minded about it. So I, I love that. So most hairstylists are gonna tell you they can't do your hair for you. Yeah, and it's true. Again, they probably are going to tell you that they can't, you know, do your hair because they're really unfamiliar, not trained with henna. There are no schools that are teaching how to do henna professionally. That's why we have our course coming out.
I don't f with henna. I would never. I have messed with henna in the past and it hasn't been cute. So I stopped doing that. Um, and in most nice salons, they're gonna tell you, no, I cannot do your hair if you have henna. I, I would really like to hear more about like your experiences that you had henna. You said I had some bad experiences. I'm just curious to know what might have happened. Oh, I will want make one note that if you do try to lift henna out and you're trying to go from darker to light, that's usually when hairdressers have the worst experience with henna because going from a dark tone like henna and indigo mix let's say that's kind of dark brown or even black um and then going anything that has indigo and you're trying to strip it out usually leaves a really nasty green hue so it's not that green hue story is not really about henna henna as a plant doesn't give you green tones whatsoever it's always orangish or reddish kind of like that red range but indigo Mm, yeah, it could be a pain in the butt. <laughs> So if you're trying to change your color at any point when you have henna, it's not going to happen um, unless you do it yourself or you have somebody that's brave enough to take on that task. But there are natural hairstylists that will do henna on your hair, even if you use perm and other chemical dyes. There is a wave of uh, natural stylists coming on board with henna. So I'm I'm excited to see that change in that movement. You're probably gonna be stuck with the same color for a very long time until it grows out. Another downfall is uneven results. If you use a color like this straight out of the box, you're gonna get different results every time because it is a leaf and it's all natural. It's not regulated like that. So you're not gonna know exactly what color you're gonna get every single time. I have heard that you can buy henna from a store like Lush and um, you can actually mix it yourself and add different dyes and stuff to it so that you get the exact color you're looking for i never knew that that brand had other ingredients and other ways to make it I'm, I'm really not familiar with that i haven't heard of that but you can keep it even by not always just doing all of your hair some of our clients will also just do like you know the root area if you just do if we we're just doing the roots if you're doing it yourself or i'm doing it i'm definitely gonna do a root touch up to keep it like more even rather than always dying all the hair so there's kind of options um you know in that Sometimes you also don't really know what they're adding into the formulas. Yes, a lot of henna blends and henna colors have unknown ingredients. Um, that's why I don't mess with that. At Henna Sook, it's all about the raw, natural, pure ingredients. So that way you know exactly what's going into your uh, recipe. So you don't know if this has some nasty ingredient or there actually is some hair dye in it. It says all natural in the packaging, but I'm pretty sure this is not regulated by the FDA. So I'm not sure what is actually in here and you can't be either. Another downfall is if you previously have colored your hair and your hair is not its natural color, you may get weird results from the chemicals of the hair dye you used mixing with the henna. That's happened before. You could get green results or other colors that are from the indigo the indigo is the culprit on this green tone it's not the henna actually but um it's usually in a lot of color blends when they're more like brown and dark brown and up to black so that's the annoying part uh, yeah <laughs> and yes virgin hair will soak up i think probably any dye or henna like really well it, because it's so you know virgin and new and fresh to taking it probably really if it's very porous as well, it'll absorb henna really well. This cannot be used to make your hair lighter. Whatever starting color you're at, it's going to deposit tone on top of it. Yes, very true. It cannot make your hair lighter. It's not a chemical, so it's not gonna strip out uh, the color, you know, your natural hair color. It's not gonna strip that out. It's going to naturally deposit on the hair and give you that natural tone. It's best to be used working with your natural hair color. I will say though, if your hair is naturally like dark brown, Henna alone will give your hair the appearance of lightness because it's depositing a reddish tint. So we have all of the burgundy color on. It is looking green. The other side's starting to look red, which is exciting. It made a little bit of a mess, got a little bit on me, but that's to be expected with color. I'm just gonna kind of scrunch this in. That's what I've been doing. I 
am so glad that he's using his hands. Oh my gosh. Actually, that's the best part of henna hair coloring that I love. And yes, you can get it on your on your scalp because you want to get on those roots and especially edges. Anywhere where there's stubborn hair that's not laying down or coloring or grays, definitely massage it in it and make sure it's very well saturated. This side is starting to turn red and this side looks a little more green. So that is from the leaves and the leaves are starting to kind of like process on I wonder though, he didn't really mention I, that he was using two different... I don't know if they're the same brand or he's using like he said henna red and henna the burgundy i don't know which one was which so that's where i was a little confused this is all weird i don't know how this really works this is just some kind of sorcery shit. Yeah, i don't know he's like what's happening inside my body when i drink green tea that is turning so red. cute it's the same thing oh my god he is so okay. silly so we're gonna <laughs> let this process for one hour with a bag over our head i'm gonna add a little bit of heat just to kind of warm things up as if it's a natural real head look at his gloves though you guys see that look how like oh my gosh he got some good dye on those gloves we know it's working and um an hour usually it's about three to four hours but if you use heat you can cut that time in half which is really a plus for professionals because you most of the time cannot have a client sitting in your chair for three to four hours so heat and steam really help just to kind of warm things up as if it's a natural real head because she has no heat coming from her scalp and i'm pretty sure that'll help the process and help things move along a little faster i'll see you guys once we rinse this off and take a look at what we've got and analyze the befores and the afters. I'll see you then. Are you ready to see the results? Oh, whoa. So before and after, okay. It doesn't look like a huge change. I see it though. It depends on the lighting, how it hits it. Her hair looks really pretty though. It just doesn't seem, um, I guess as bright as I would have thought. I, I really actually, I mean, I like the henna color, how it came out. She looks amazing. I feel like maybe it's just that mannequin. It makes her look younger and, and more fun. <laughs> I think she looks like she's having a better time. I don't know. Honestly, like I like it. I don't know. You guys tell me. You tell me what you think. Does her hair look red? I would say so. Yeah. Um. Does it look a whole lot different? You know what? Yeah, I wouldn't say like a lot, a lot different, but it definitely did a lot more than I was expecting it yeah, to. Yeah, I'm just, I would have thought it would have been more, but I guess I'm not familiar, I've never used those other brands. I'm only familiar with Penasuk's brand. Usually I would get more color results from it. It would be a little bit more brighter or deeper. Um, it's pretty though. I, I really do like it. And her hair to me looks shinier. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> more than I was expecting it to. When you have that green kind of paste on the hair, you're like, how is this going to make the hair red? Especially because red and green are opposite on the color wheel. And you're like, how is that going to work? Um, It actually did a great job at making her naturally dark blonde hair into this nice copper tone. I will say that the color is really pretty in real life. And, and I also don't notice like a color difference. I don't know if he does because he's right there looking at it, but I don't see... A difference between the, the red and the burgundy uh, do you guys see a difference and super even you can also tell on camera that it's really really shiny you see really really shiny i told you guys he said it i i thought you know see it wasn't just me and the color actually looks beautiful and for this just being ground up leaves it looks really pretty now of course i wanted to compare these two colors to each other if it matters which color you use of henna i would say no these colors look pretty much exactly I'm not really sure why they look exactly the same because that's not usually the way henna from different countries come out. But again, these are blends and it's and it's it's hard for I don't know. Like I don't I just stick to the raw natural henna. So for example, like if you wanted a burgundy tone, usually the Indian henna powders like organic, uh, what we've got Rajasthani he is right here, that gives you more of a burgundy tone. And if you wanted it more coppery, um, you know, the Moroccan henna usually works a lot better at doing that. Why is that the case? Is because it's like apples, you have different variants and variables of where these are growing in climates, so it can vary. I don't know how, if this is just ground up leaves, how you would get different colors and different variations and how they really test that when they're putting it into a box. None of that makes sense to me. It kind of sounds like bullshit. Brad. I would be more than happy for you to take our professional course like and check it out and see if you get different results or something you know you learn i know you're all about learning and i love that and you're so open-minded you gotta hit me up if you're interested it kind of sounds like bullshit. 
and you probably get the same exact color no matter which kind of henna dye you use. You could use the red or the burgundy or no, any kind. The henna soap is gonna be way different. I left it on for an hour, rinsed it off. Her hair, I wouldn't say feels like thicker. It definitely feels very, very healthy. I mean, I did blow dry her hair and of course, Oh yeah, I just remembered. He did say he was gonna leave it on for an hour. So I wonder if he did the three to four hours if the color would've got deeper. Like if you don't leave it on as long, it won't get as dark. So that could have been the case. I'm not sure since I didn't do the test, the mannequin, I wasn't me. So I'm not really sure, but that would make the most sense to me. I mean, I did blow dry her hair and of course it's gonna look a little bit more shiny after I did a blow dry on her with a ceramic round brush. So you're getting the effects of that, but I also do think the hair is actually a lot shinier, especially on the ends. I think she looks pretty damn good. I would definitely wear my hair like this. I love the color. Let's go over. Did you just hear him? I would definitely wear my hair like this. I love the color. He said he would do his hair like that. All right, Brad, let's, okay, that's the challenge then. You gotta do your hair with henna. I'm waiting, yes, color over the, the blue and we're gonna get you some henna. I'm gonna hook it up and you just said that uh, you would try it out so we need to hook you up. I guess the real question is now, what I recommend you use henna. I would say for me, the cons outweigh the pros for me. I would just use regular old hair color. You're gonna know it's in the product. You're gonna get just as much shine. Yes, it's not natural, but you can find more natural hair color lines. It's still chemicals though. It's, it's, I understand where you're coming from but it's still not good for you. If we learn anything, especially even this pandemic, is we gotta be healthy. We need to strengthen our bodies, do everything we can to be healthier and not to put all these chemicals in our, in our hair and in our body and watch what we eat. You know, it's bigger than that natural hair color lines that don't have as many chemicals and still work amazingly well. I'm not really a fan. I get why people use it. I'm not against it. I don't think it's the worst thing ever. Just don't come asking me to remove it anytime ever because I can't help you with that. You're on your own with that one. If you guys have any thoughts about henna that I didn't go over today, I would love to know down below or things that I might have gotten wrong. Let me know. And I thought he did a great job though. Brad, I mean, this is amazing. I'm so glad you did it. And this is actually my first reaction video. So the timing was perfect. And you just seem like a really great guy. And I'm just so happy that you came at it with such an open mind. So I wanted to say that that was a lot of fun. Oh my, that was, that was a really seriously a lot of fun. I really enjoyed myself in doing that. I wonder if I should do more. I mean, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments below. Don't forget, find Henna Sook on all of our social media platforms and also subscribe to our channel. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Stay tuned.